Oh, come, all ye faithful, sing with me. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation, sing all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest, oh come let us adore him. Good singing, and now if you will turn to 275, 275, we'll greet one another in just a moment here, uh, midway through this song, but let's sing, sing we now of Christmas, Noel, sing we here, we'll sing the first two verses and then greet our neighbors. Sing we now of Christmas, Noel, sing we here, listen to our praises. this morning and we'll sing the last two verses in just a moment. We're going to sing that third verse. 
In the town they found him. In the town they found him, son of Mary Mild, sleeping in a manger was the holy child. Sing we Noel, the King is born Noel. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we all Noel. And the last. Wise men sought and found him, treasures they did bring. Bowing down they worshipped Christ the King of Kings. Sing we Noel, the King is born Noel. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we all Noel. Great singing this morning. Well, good morning. It is good to see everyone here this morning at Truth Baptist Church. What a float out there, huh? Uh, that looks great, doesn't it? And uh, we are excited about it. And I know a number of us are going to be in the Mechanicsville Christmas Parade today. And I know at least uh, one of my children will actually be riding on it. Johnny is. And he looked at it, and I heard him saying to some of his friends, it's going to be like a hayride, and uh, just with a lot of people on either side instead of woods and crops and things like that. So we're excited about today. This is something we've never done, uh, but if you did see the float out in the parking lot, we have uh, a float in the Mechanicsville Christmas Parade representing Truth Baptist Church, and we're going to be making our presence known to the community, not just with the float, but also with our folks who will be walking with it and riding on it. And most importantly, we'll be handing out some candy canes that have the gospel with them. And that's what it's all about. Amen. And we want to take every opportunity we can to get into the community and to try to reach people with the truth of the gospel. And I can't think of a better way to do that uh, than to do what we're doing today. So thank you for all who have had a part in it and who will have a part in it a little bit later today. We're praying for that. And let's uh, continue to pray that God would have his hand over all that happens in the parade as well as today in the service thanks for getting here early for a 10 o'clock service instead of 10 30. Uh, we're not making the services later we're moving them back earlier and uh, but that's just for this sunday and we're going to move things along quickly no junior church today and uh, as a matter of fact we're going to uh, be done with the singing but during the offertory that's probably when we'll get our group who's playing starting to get into place for the special uh, so kind of keep all these things in mind if you would. Let's pray and uh, we'll get started. Father, thank you for your love for us and for the opportunity to be together in this place, to worship together in spirit and in truth, to consider the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ. That's paramount to all that we do. And I pray that we would not forget that. I ask that in the service today, as well as in the parade to follow, Lord, that the focus would be on Christ. That's what we're here for, to make you the focus. I pray that we get focus off self. I pray that we get focus off our doings and, Lord, attention anywhere else other than on you. And I pray, Lord, that that would be our heartbeat this Christmas season. Uh, thank you, Lord, for those who've come out today and who decided to be here early uh, for the service and for all that will take place here just a little bit later. Uh, thank you for those who are visiting with us. And if there might be somebody here who's never received you as Lord and Savior of their life, I pray that they do that today. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward at this time. And they have a visitor packet of information with them. There's a booklet and a pen and a visitor welcome card. And if you're visiting today for the first time, we want to let you know we're glad that you're here today. Thank you for coming to Truth Baptist Church. Right now, as the ushers come down, if you are visiting, don't be shy. Just raise your hand briefly. We want to see who you are so we can give this booklet to you. And we ask that you just fill out all the information on the visitor welcome card. And in just a moment, as the offering plate comes by, you can drop that in the offering plate uh, so we know who you are and how to make a record of your visit. If you don't get a chance to fill it out now, hopefully you can do so later. But we want to get a chance to meet you. My wife and I will be out in the lobby, and uh, we'll just be there briefly after the service today. We hope we'll get a chance 
uh, to say hello. Uh, all the children are staying in the main service today, okay? So no junior church uh, as we have an abbreviated service, and so keep that in mind. If you look in your bulletin, there is kind of a little mini calendar of events that is taking place for the month of December. We make Christmas a big deal here at Truth Baptist Church, and the reason we do is because it's all about Jesus, as I just prayed. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ and his birth. And there's plenty of opportunities to get involved. And what we want you to do is to try to just determine to be a part of all the Christmas activities that are forthcoming. And so the plan is next Sunday we'll have our children's Christmas program. There'll be a rehearsal for that beforehand, and you'll see that scheduled there in the bulletin. There's also uh, going to be Christmas caroling that will be taking place. Uh, not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, December 15th. On that particular Wednesday night, there'll be no evening service, and we'll be coming together just to go out caroling. And we'll meet here at 6 o'clock, and we're going to go to different widows and shut-ins within our church that we want to be a blessing to, and we want to stop by their place of residence and sing a few Christmas carols to them. That's a church-wide event, and we expect a lot of people to come to that we need a lot of folks to come to that because we try to break up into three or four different groups so we can cover everybody. And uh, last year, I think we had snow, believe it or not, on, on Wednesday night. We had to move it to Thursday night, and that kind of affected things a little bit. We'll pray for no snow on that particular night, okay? Although it is festive when you're caroling. Uh, but come on out. Again, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. This Wednesday, we will have our usual Kings Kids and Youth Group in our final one uh, of 2021 before we get into the new year. And then just be aware of all the things that are happening. There's actually an ugly sweater night that's taking place. That's going to be fun. Uh, that's in a couple Sundays from now. Uh, it doesn't have to be ugly, but just a Christmas sweater, just a sweater night. Uh, that same night, we're going to have Christmas music. And we have different people that we're asking to sign up to play or sing a special on that Sunday night. Next Sunday night, a week from this Sunday, we are going to have the Verrettes with us. So Chris and Bethany will be back. They're back from the Pacific Northwest for just a few days, and they're making it a priority to be with us next Sunday, not in the morning, but in the evening service. Uh, and Bethany's going to play the offertory. Uh, Brother Verrett's going to preach for us next Sunday night. So a lot to look forward to. And there are, if there's anything close to a homegrown missionary, the Verrettes are it. And uh, they, you know, they were here during the formative time of ministry, of getting their feet established as a young married couple. I had the opportunity to see them married. Then they went off to the Pacific Northwest to help in church plants there. And we support them as a monthly missionary. So you'll want to be here next Sunday night. And because of the parade uh, today, there is no evening service uh, this evening. So keep that in mind. Uh, I put an email out a couple of different times uh, at the one I sent earlier in the week has a link, and on that link you will see the exact route of the Mechanicsville Christmas Parade. Now we're going to meet here at noon for anyone who wants a ride over in a church van, but I know a number of people want to drive themselves. If you just go to the Mechanicsville Rec Center where the pool is, if you're serving in the parade, if you're a parade participant and you signed up, we need you to be a part of the parade and continue to hold to that, but we also... Uh, just want you to know where to go and you need to park there at the Mechanicsville Rec Center, the pool off of Elm Street, there's a big parking lot, and then you can either walk to the staging area which is Hanover Green Drive or you can take a shuttle, there's supposed to be some shuttles taking people over to Hanover Green Drive, okay? Now if you're not in the parade but you'd like to watch the parade today, just keep a couple of roads in mind, okay? You can stand along Atlee Road, Hillis Road, Strain Avenue or Old Mechanicsville 360, and you'll see people starting to line up along those roads. It's kind of a big block, almost a two-mile block. We're going to go around 1.8 miles to be exact. Uh, we want folks to be there good and early if you're in the parade. We're asking to be there around 1245. I know some might not get there right then, but be advised that roads close at 140. And uh, so if you're waiting too long, because the parade starts at 2 o'clock, you're not going to be able to get in. And so I would say by 1 o'clock or just, you know, not much longer than that, kind of know where you are and where you're going to be and get there. And we're going to wait a little while in the staging area. If we're in the parade, that's okay. It's okay to have good fellowship with God's people. Maybe you could walk around, look at some of the other floats, say hi to the fire chief and the sheriff and everyone else 
I, to I talked to Chief Pylan this week, and he said usually they're giving out hot dogs and hot chocolate and all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll look forward to all of that. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. And we will collect the offering. And right after this offering, we're going to go right into the special. So if those who are performing the special want to begin to get in place soon, you can do that. And then we'll have our message. Brother Mike Zinn, would you pray for the offering, please? from heaven and be born of a virgin's womb. What king could die for all mankind and be laid in a borrowed tomb? What man could raise up from the dead and ascend to heaven's throne? No one else could do what he has done. No one else could take the burdens from Make it white as snow 
Whose love could take a ruined life and make it pure and whole. There is only one man who can set a sinner free. No one else could do what he's done for me. No one else could take the burdens from me. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And uh, you might notice we got another, is that a, another bass player up here? All right. Now, Pressgrove, that starts with a P. Whenever Brother Purcell's up here, that starts with a P. So it's still technically chick peas <laughs> and a tater. But I think it was Greg that said we can also say chick peas, a tater, and some M&Ms because you got Mike and Matt, you know, so we're... As it grows, we'll just continue to add to it. Now, in the parade, my brother-in-law, Brother Robino, Steve, he's going to be a part of that, and so we'll have to figure out how to work that in there. I'm not sure exactly, but we'll think, think on that. Uh, we are in Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2. I love that song. No one else could have done it. Only Christ. Amen? No one else could do what the Lord Jesus did. Only he could have come and been born in a manger to live among us. To be mocked and scorned eventually and put to death. Crucified, buried, and thankfully risen again so that we can be saved. We're in Luke chapter number 2. Now I've started in Matthew, but we're going to come back to Matthew in another Sunday or two, and then we'll continue through Matthew in the new year, but as we're in some of these Christmas messages, we're going to refer to other Christmas passages, and we're in Luke chapter 2 this morning, beginning in verse 11, I'm going to read verses 11 through 14, and then skip to verse 20, there the Bible says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall... Find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now skip to verse 20. And there the Bible says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. I'm just going to preach for a few moments this morning about celebrating the season. Let's pray. Lord, I ask that you'd help us in these few moments this morning to understand the importance of this familiar passage, but Lord, it's such a precious passage, one that should be meaningful to all of us as your people. I pray that we would celebrate the season and do so appropriately. And do so, Lord, with great enthusiasm and excitement of all that it means. I pray that this Christmas, Lord, would be the most celebratory of all Christmases. I pray that it would be a Christmas like none other, one that we'll remember where perhaps we took on a different approach, put aside some of the difficulties, some of the hurts, some of the uh, sorrows, 
that sometimes arise this time of year, and I pray that we would truly celebrate the season and all that it means. Help us to see how to do that from this passage, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I love Christmas. How about you? Can I get a good hearty amen? Amen. Now, how many of you, just be honest, say, it's okay, but I'm kind of a Scrooge. Come on, let me, let me see. All right, <laughs> I see some of you. And uh, so there's always some Scrooges in the mix. The good thing about Scrooge is he comes full circle in the end, okay? So if you're a Scrooge, there's hope for you. And I hope by the end of this message, you have a change of heart, okay? Uh, without the dreams and the ghosts and everything else that come with it, okay? Uh, but I love Christmas. I just love it. I grew up loving Christmas. We grew up excited about Christmas at my house. And, you know, that's one thing that, you know, my parents now are part of the church. They would tell you they went all out for Christmas. There was no holding back. Uh, pulled out all the stops and everything from presents to cookies to baking to decorations uh, to church plays and school plays and everything else. Uh, we didn't hold back a bit. I'm thankful for that upbringing. I have also found that so much of our upbringing shapes us, doesn't it? I love it, I think, because of the way I was raised, partly. You might be the same way. Maybe it wasn't made such a big deal in your home. Maybe you were raised by a Scrooge or a Scroogeette. And so perhaps it's a little different and perhaps it's a, you know, a little harder for you to get into the spirit of things. But if we go back to really the spirit of Christmas and what it's all about, we see Luke chapter 2, an amazing scene that unfolds. And I'm sure if you've been around the Word of God or have heard preaching for any amount of time, you understand what takes place. There were shepherds outside watching over their flocks by night, when suddenly an angel appears to them, an angel of the Lord, and gives them great news. Immediately they are fearful, understandably so, when a heavenly being comes into anyone's presence, we would all be fearful. But he immediately gives them a great message, and he says unto them in verse 10, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of Great joy, which shall be to all people. That verse should sum up Christmas for all of us. Good tidings of great joy for all people. It, it is the best news that these shepherds had ever heard and that our world had ever heard or has ever heard. That Jesus, God, came to be born and to live among us so that we could be saved. There's nothing better than that. That's good tidings of great joy. You'll see on the front of your bulletin that word joy. One of the ushers gave that to me this morning and I said, I guess i got to be joyful now. Is this a message subliminally or just directly that we are to be joyful? I guess so. Of great joy. Notice, which shall be to all people. Whether we realize it or not, Christmas is for everyone. Now, not everybody benefits from it ultimately in the same way, but it is a time for everyone to be joyful, even those who might not yet come to a place where they've received Jesus Christ personally. They can experience the joy and the blessing of the season, and it may just be the very thing that propels them to coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ themselves. So let's look at these verses very quickly. I have three thoughts about celebrating the season. Number one, because of the Savior. That's where it begins and really where it ends. But look at verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a, let's say it together, Savior. Let's say it one more time. A Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That is where it begins, because of the Savior. Uh, if you had no other reason to celebrate today, or this year, or this month, do so because of the Savior. If not for yourself, or if not for your life currently as it is, or for any other reason, celebrate because of the one that we are celebrating it's truly about him anyhow. It's about his birth and his coming to live among us. It's about the Savior. You don't have to turn there, but in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, as the angel spoke to Joseph, he said these words, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. What a precious name. Yeshua, Jesus, Savior. 
for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus came and was born and lived among us for a purpose. And that purpose is laid out there in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, to save his people from their sins. Celebrate, if nothing else, this year because of Jesus, for he truly is the reason for the season. And I've got good news for you today. He can save you. He can save you from your sins. The Bible doesn't specify which sins. In that passage in Matthew, the Bible doesn't say for certain sins or uh, just for some sins, but your sins, all of them, you can be forgiven of all of your sins once and for all by placing your faith in the Savior, the one who can save and the one who wants to save you. The Bible says, for he came to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm glad to know this morning that I'm saved. And I make no bones about it. In saying that I'm saved, I'm safe. I'm safe from the wrath of God. Because the wrath of God is a real thing upon those who reject his son, Jesus Christ. I'm safe from an eternity in hell that was not even initially prepared for us or for anyone other than the devil and his angels. I'm safe from that. Uh, I'm safe from the condemnation of my own sins because my sins have been forgiven. In other words, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has come upon me and washed me clean of them. I'm saved. And therefore, I'm safe from my sin, from the wrath of God, from the penalty of hell, uh, from, from sin, death, and destruction. Now, yes, death will come eventually to all of us. The Bible says, is it appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. But my physical death will be the only time I die. Some die twice. And not only do they die physically, but then they experience that spiritual death for all of eternity, separation from God in a place called hell. But that doesn't have to be so for anyone who will receive the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the good news. That's what we can be excited about. The Bible says, unto you, it's a gift to you. Uh, I, I might do this, usually I do it around Christmas Eve or so. I take my big, nice, red Christmas gift uh, wrapped in red paper and a golden bow, and I say, this looks like a nice gift. Think about the greatest gift you've ever received. It pales in comparison to the gift that is presented to you now, and that's Jesus, who wants to be your Savior. Celebrate the season because of the Savior, if for nothing else. I want to tell you, I hope you go all out for the season. You ought to decorate. Uh, you ought to get excited. Uh, you should be more joyful than usual. Uh, whether it's decorating for a parade float or being in a parade or playing music or, uh, you know, walking along and giving out candy canes, you should be joyful this time of the year. You know, I don't have much to be joyful about, Pastor. Look at our world. Look at our culture. Look at people. Nothing to be joyful about. Wait a minute. There's still a Savior who loves you. It doesn't change what he's done and what he wants to do in your life. Oh, there's reason to be joyful. So celebrate, decorate, buy a gift for someone, receive a gift from those who give it to you. Our reaction to this season must not be bah humbug, but it must be praise God for the Savior. And I want to rejoice over that. And all the things that we do for Christmas ought to point back to that. We can enjoy every aspect of this season, but still have it be ultimately because of the Savior. Just make sure that that's the focal point. It's because of the Savior. And we can do that in so many different ways. Make him the focus, and your Christmas will be the best it's ever been. Here, here's my second thought. Celebrate this uh, season by seeing the signs. Notice, there's a message that's given to the shepherds. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
And without developing all of this, we understand that Mary and Joseph were peasant people. They were a poor couple. They went to Joseph's hometown, Bethlehem, to be taxed. And it was an arduous journey just to get there. When they do arrive, there's no room in the inn, so they end up finding shelter in a place where animals were housed. Now, whether it was a stable like the one that's built on the float, which is unlikely, or whether it was a cave, which is more likely, they found some kind of shelter where animals were. And the sign given to the shepherds is, you're going to find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes were some kind of a rag of some sort, if Mary had one. If she had a rag, if she had some kind of a wrap for the baby. Some commentators that I read suggest that Joseph and Mary may not have had proper clothes fitting for a newborn baby, so they may have gone without them. And the swaddling clothes may be referring to something that they found in the cave that was used to clean out the animal feed trough, which the baby was laid into. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, we, we dress it up, and I think it's okay to dress it up a bit. You, if you look out there on the float, boy, we got this nice golden garland, and, it, and, and we should do that because we want to draw attention to what we're trying to focus on, which is the, the manger. But we even put some golden garland around the manger. If we keep doing this parade, I think one of these years we're going to try to put a big old cave in there, just like a big, really kind of a, just a rough-looking cave. We'll get some animals up there. Uh, we'll get some animal smells going. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get like a, you know, a, some really poor-looking people, Mary and Joseph, that don't look presentable. Austin and Hannah are going to do a much, you know, they're going to look very presentable. But one of these days, we'll just get the worst of the worst, and we'll just make it look bad. And that'll be a true representation of what it was all about. Now, it's funny. In, in a place like Mechanicsville on a Christmas parade, I don't think people want to put their eyes upon that. But that's what it was. And the angel said, this is going to be a sign. Maybe the shepherds saw, thought, what's the sign going to be? Some dramatic presentation in the sky? No, it's going to be a baby wrapped up in some rough clothes laying in an animal feed trough. That's the sign. Now, we have signs today. And one of the things I think we need to remember in the Christmas season that help us to understand the authenticity of the story are the prophecies that were given. Because I dare say that there's a tendency in the, in the mind of people who maybe were not brought up in a religious home, who maybe were not brought up in church, or maybe just have a lot of aversions to that, to kind of dismiss it all. Okay, it's a goofy little children's story. It makes for a nice little presentation. It's about Jesus and not ourselves, and that gets people to think, you know, in an unselfish manner, and that's what we ought to do at Christmas, because it's really not all about us, it's about others, and Jesus helps us with that. And, and we can really, to be honest with you, we can just dismiss it all as being a fairy tale. This is no fairy tale. And the shepherds realized that right away. When they showed up, where there was actually a woman who was outside, who had just given birth to a baby, outside in a rough animal shelter. Ladies, you know how difficult it was to give birth in the best of conditions. Every one of my children, all four of my children, I was there, right there for all four of their births. And every single time they were born, I thought to myself, there was no way we could have done this without a hospital, a doctor, and a sterilized room, especially a doctor. Because I would have been terrible um, I would have dropped the baby. She would have not have delivered properly. I, it, it took the professionals to know what they were doing, and I'm thankful that they were present. Can you imagine not having any of that? But your husband, who's inexperienced with children himself, you're giving birth to your first child, and all that comes with that in the roughest, most unsterilized of conditions... No, that was the sign that they had. 
but it's reality not just because I'm telling it to you from behind a pulpit today, it's reality because of the many prophecies that were given about Jesus years and years and hundreds and even beyond years before. Let me just give you a few of them, and you don't have to turn there, but just listen. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 said that Jesus would come from the seed of a woman. In Genesis 12, 3, the Bible says, prophesies that he would be of the seed of Abraham. In Genesis 17, 19, of the seed of Isaac. In Numbers 24, 17, of the seed of Jacob. In Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10, we see that he would come from the tribe of Judah. One of my favorite titles for Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That was prophesied many years before. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 7, the Bible made it clear that he would be heir to the throne of David. In Psalm 45 and verse 6, we're told that he would be anointed and that he would be eternal. In Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, many, many, many years before, it was prophesied by the prophet Micah that he would be born in Bethlehem. In Daniel chapter 9 and verse 25, we, give the, we are given the specific time and place of his birth. In Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, the Bible makes it clear that he would be born of a virgin. And folks, I'm just scratching the surface. So many prophecies were already given about Yeshua. Years and years before, all of them to come to pass. And I want to encourage you in this Christmas season to see the signs. Celebrate by seeing the signs. Understand that Jesus is not a made-up fairy tale. Jesus is God. He was God in the flesh. All the prophecies, every last one that were given about him hundreds of years earlier by prophets, all came to pass exactly as they were given. We need to see the signs. Here's a good practical way to do that. Isn't it amazing how, as secularized as our world is, as rejecting of God as our world is, in, at the Christmas season, Christ is celebrated. 98.1, I turn there and listen to some Christmas music, not during the year, but just during this time of the year. And there's certain songs I turn when they come on, even some of the Christmas ones. No, this Christmas I didn't give anyone my heart or take it back or anything like that. But there's a lot of other songs that are sung on that station, and I'll tell you, they're about Jesus. On a secular radio station, about Jesus, about the Christ child, about celebrating the Savior. And isn't it interesting how in this time of the year, it's accepted. Can I ask you to do something? See the signs. See the sign. If we can't see it right in front of us, we're trying not to. When our own secularized world can recognize Jesus as Savior, when we live in the year 2021, soon to be 2022, and those nu numeric numbers, that, that numeric number 2022 is based upon Jesus and his birth, we should wake up and see the sign. This wasn't just anyone. This was God in the flesh. And all that was told about him in the word of God is exactly as it is, and we must accept it by faith. Here's the last and final one, by singing the Psalms. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on peace, on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Get the picture, first there's the angel of God, but then there's a heavenly host that arrives. And that heavenly host, I can imagine, it was a choir like none other. I, I, I don't know how many untold thousands or beyond that of angels there were. But the shepherds are there. They've been interacting with one angel. Then suddenly, the angel of a multitude of the heavenly hosts. So a heavenly host begins to sound forth and they sing forth. And they give this message, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. The shepherds are so affected by this song of praise that they go into Jerusalem. 
and they don't care who they're coming in contact with, and they tell everybody what they just saw and heard. They're giving the message of Jesus with enthusiasm and excitement. By the way, when we go out to this parade today, we should be the most enthusiastic bunch there. Because we've seen and heard and know who Jesus the Savior is. Do you know, and I don't know how many, it, it's over 100 different parade participants. There are well over 100. I think there's only two churches. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. There's going to be groups and businesses and all the stuff that you see in a lot of Christmas parades, but we're going to be probably one of the few where there's going to be a live nativity on the floats. That should catch people's attention. And then one of the few where people are singing about Jesus and then passing out candy canes with a message of the gospel on it. We, like these shepherds, need to go out into the highways and the hedges literally today with the greatest message of all time and to be excited and enthusiastic about it. And notice the Bible says in verse 20, and the shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Whether you're a singing the Christmas carols before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving person, I don't care. The issue is this, sing them. Just sing them. You can make your own determination whether you want to start singing September 1st or December 1st. It's, it's up to you, but there's no problem with singing them unto God. It's about praising Him. Glory to God in the highest. We should sing forth these Christmas carols with as much gusto as we ever have. There's going to be a lot of singing taking place this month. Sing unto the Lord. Help people when they're hearing those songs over the radios about Jesus to know what that message is and what it means and how it can change their life. Because after all, it's changed ours. And we should have a song on our heart because of it. Let's do that this year. Let's celebrate the season like never before because of the Savior, by seeing the signs, but also by singing the songs. There's so much rejoicing surrounding this event that we should do the same rejoice at the Christmas party rejoice in your home rejoice with your church family wear the ugly sweater or any kind of sweater just enjoy the time of year I heard one preacher say listen it's time to have a party in December that's what they did in Luke chapter 2 we need to do the same thing but beyond anything else see Jesus as he is our Savior and us for who we are, sinners in need of that Savior. And if you've been saved, praise God. By the grace of God, you are what you are. You have been saved. If you're here and you need to be saved, don't wait another second. This message is a reality and it can change your life. Receive him today. And this Christmas will be different than any other Christmas ever has. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? Quietly with heads bowed and with eyes closed, I wonder if there might be somebody here who would say, Pastor, I want to have a Christmas like I've never had, and I want it to be all about Jesus Christ. And I recognize myself as a sinner, Jesus as my Savior, and I want to trust in him once and for all to save me from my sin. And pastor, I don't care about anything else. Now, no one's looking or watching you, and we're not trying to get you to do anything other than what the Lord is prompting in your heart. And I'm pleading with you, don't take another moment or another minute to accept Jesus. And if you're here and you might say, I, I just want to trust in him. I want to make it clear once and for all that I recognize I'm a sinner, but that Jesus is Lord and that he came and was all God and all man and he lived among us and he ultimately was crucified and bled and died but rose from the dead three days later. And I'm trusting in that this morning. If that's you, would you please say this to the Lord? Not to anyone else or for anyone else, but to the Lord in faith call upon him and say these words dear God 
I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. Would you please save me from my sin? Please come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus is God, and that he was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord, and help me to live for you. If that's you this morning and you just prayed that prayer, would you just raise your hand so I know how to pray for you? Pastor, I just prayed that prayer. Amen. If you have been saved, rejoice in that. Jesus is your Savior. May this season be a time of rejoicing. We get our eyes on the wrong things. We get mixed up about what it's all about. It's about Jesus, first and foremost, and we start from there, and, and, and that, that's what makes everything else wonderful. Make him truly the reason to celebrate this year. Father, thank you for this opportunity to look into your word, speak to our hearts. I pray that the parade that we'll be involved in, Lord, will truly be a time of rejoicing and celebrating you and your birth. Help us to keep that as the focal point of our life. Lord, not just this time of the year, but all year long. Speak to our hearts now in this brief moment of invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please, quietly, with heads bowed and with eyes closed. If you're here and you've received the Lord, you can still respond in the invitation. However the Lord might be leading, I want to encourage you as Holly now begins to play. Would you come? Maybe you made that prayer of salvation. Let us know about that. We'd like to be a help and an encouragement to you in the days ahead. Well, amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Um, we're going to meet back here at noon for a few who might need to be driven over to where we're going to go. For those, again, who are parade participants, Hanover Green Drive. Google it. You'll find it pretty easily. Uh, just be aware that uh, really by 1.30, I'd say, roads are going to start to close. Um, I even brought something here to get into the spirit. I was looking for a sc I never wear scarves, ever. Uh, but I said, Heather, I need a scarf because I'm going to be in the parade. So in the spirit of Christmas, I got my scarf on today. All right. I was looking for a red one, but yeah, yeah. Help me out here. I need, I need help. <laughs> Tell me I look good and festive, not like a, a weirdo. Okay. And uh, but anyway, we're going to have a good time today. And uh, I hope that you are blessed by all that takes place. We're going to have some wise men, some shepherds. And uh, we'll take a lot of pictures if you're not able to be a part of it. But if you can get out there to the parade, let's, let's enjoy it. And let's be a light where we are. And we'll look forward to how God will use that. Don't come back tonight at 6. There's no evening service, okay? So remember that as well. We'll be dismissed now in a word of prayer. And uh, Brother Tate, would you dismiss us, please?